There's definitely something about a panoramic view that entices so many people of all ages to face the challenge of an arduous climb before they get to enjoy it. So it's with some thought I decided to create this tutorial on how to capture your favorite panoramic vista in what can result in a single photo you'll be able to admire again and again whatever the weather or time of year and definitely without all that exercise. Panoramic photos are a combination of several photos overlapping each other and stitched together using Adobe's Photoshop or Elements. If you have neither of these programs don't worry because there are a number of free software programs for doing this procedure which you can download off the internet. Though you may forfeit much of the quality, there are some mobile phones that are fitted with an application for taking several photos and stitching them together. When people think of panorama stitching, they tend to consider landscape scenes. However, the method we'll be looking at can also be used when you want to create a single image of a very tall building. In the Highburn area there are a number of vantage points for capturing panoramas. One of my favourites is from the top of the coppice in Peel Park, Accrington. From here you can see a grand view that takes your eye from Oseltwistle through Baxenden, Accrington Town Centre and past Winnie Hill, right up to Burnley Road. For this view, as with any panorama in the west, you will need to be out fairly early in the morning during the summer months so that the rising sun is behind you. Though the forecasted sunrise was for 4.35 a.m. in my locality, I discovered on a late June day, as you can see from these snaps, it still had some way to go an hour later before it flooded the scene below with bright sunlight. This is the panorama I'll be using for this tutorial. I'll be using a Canon DSLR 60D with a Canon EFS 55 to 250 millimeter kit lens. I also recommend you choose the RAW format and larger size for your images. For shooting panoramas, though it's not absolutely essential, I recommend you mount your camera on a sturdy tripod. This will assist you with keeping your horizon level and reduce camera shake. That being said, you must ensure your camera and tripod are level before you start shooting. This shouldn't prove difficult as most modern cameras and tripods are fitted with some form of levelling device. You can find the inbuilt level for the Canon 60D in the quick menu. When your camera is horizontally level, the line turns from red to green. However, this is only for the horizontal or left to right level of your camera. For the front to back level of your camera, you will need to use the spirit level on your tripod or one of those you can fit to the external flash connector on the top of your camera and being circular covers all angles. Whilst you will have your camera locked in place so it doesn't roll from side to side or rock backwards and forwards, Check you have free movement for panning from left to right, slowly following the horizon or length of panorama you'll be photographing. You'll find it easier to use your live view for this entire exercise. Now, something I learned from previous attempts to this is that using my camera in the horizontal position resulted in an extremely long photo with a relatively small height. In fact, it was something like 10 feet long by 4 or 5 inches in height. So for this exercise, I'm using the camera firmly locked in the vertical position. Secondly, bear in mind the photographer's rule of thirds. Most modern cameras have an inbuilt grid template, a little like the noughts and crosses lines that you can access via the menu. We don't want too much space taken up by the sky, so you can use the grid to align the top three squares with the horizon, as you can see here. Pan the full length of your panorama 
to ensure it remains where you want it inside the grid lines. The next option you may want to consider is setting up your camera's shutter action with the 10 second delay. I personally prefer using a remote control on the 2 second delay. This can be activated with either the key fob sized remote control or the plug-in kind that connects to the jack plug socket on the side of the camera. Again, using this method will help to reduce camera shake. Now set your camera's ISO to 100 and choose the aperture priority, A or AV mode on your camera. Set the aperture to around F11 and point your camera at the lightest part of your panorama. The shutter speed will set itself automatically and when it does, make a note of what it is for the next step. Now change the camera's mode to manual and input the same aperture and shutter speed you registered in step 1. This should ensure you keep a consistent exposure throughout. It is also advisable to manually check the focus of the lens for each shot. On the 60D after you've taken the shot you can use the zoom button whilst in the viewing mode to check your image is in focus. Now you're ready to start shooting your panoramic scene. When taking your first shot, assuming you're working from left to right, take careful note of what is in the right hand column of your frame. Uh, forgive me stating the obvious here, but it is wiser to use something as your marker that isn't going to get up and walk, fly or drive away. A building or a tree is often the safest bet though you could use perhaps a hedge or something else more significant on your horizon. Keeping a fixed eye on your marker, move your camera around to the right for your second shot until your marker is just inside the left hand vertical line. Check your focus manually and shoot your second frame. Repeat this process for each shot until you reach the end of your panorama. If you are taking more than one series of shots for the same panorama, it will help if you put something in front of the lens to separate them. Once you have Photoshop open, go to the bridge to access the file where you have stored your panoramic images. As you can see here, I have renamed the individual shots numerically. Select the first image and holding the shift key down, select the last photo in the sequence and all of them should be highlighted. Drag them into your Photoshop workspace. This will open your camera RAW software if you installed it. The program accompanies most Canon DSLR camera kits. Here is where you can make whatever adjustments you feel are necessary for all the photos in your panorama. Begin with your adjustments to the first and at this stage the only image selected. In order to maintain the same adjustments for all the images in your panorama, click on the Select All button above the column showing your images. Now, hiding in the corner, there is a pop-out menu which, when selected, will give you several options of which you should choose Previous Conversion. This will apply the same adjustments to all your images as you carried out with the first one. Once you're satisfied all your images are now in Photoshop, this is where you get out your needle and thread. Eh? No, it's not that kind of stitching. Now go to File and running down the menu, you'll come to Automate. This reveals yet another drop-down menu where the last item is Photo Merge. Click on this and a smaller window will open with several options for you to choose from. Firstly, click on the button that states Add Open Files and your open images will be listed. I tend to use the Auto option in the layout, so select this. Click OK and sit back to watch the magic take place before your very eyes. 
As you can see, with each photo, a new layer has been added. Before you can do any further processing, you will need to merge these layers into one. Now there are two ways you can deal with a blank space around your panorama. If you are really patient and have lots of time to spend on it, you can use the selection tool to select the blank areas and fill them with content aware. I'll show you a brief example of this. Choose the selection tool and select some of the blank area. This is quite a memory intensive process so I advise you to do small patches at a time. Don't worry if it's not perfect with your first fills. You can tidy up any bits and pieces with the clone tool. As I am short on time to complete this, I am going to show you the quickest route to getting your panorama nearer to completion. I'll just take this back in the history tool to after we merged all the individual layers. Now select the crop tool, making sure the measurement fields are blank. Click and drag the crop grid over your image. Don't worry if you go slightly over any edges in order to gain the maximum size. These can be filled or cloned as we did before. Whilst I'm finishing this off, I'll tell you about the printing process. Unless you have a very expensive printer and reams of printing paper, like me, you will need to send your panorama to a professional printers. I use Pro Photo Prints, who are a sister company of the better known Pro-Am printers. A recent quote they gave me for a panorama photo that was just under 8 feet long by 1 foot high was £37, which I think is quite reasonable. You will need to download their printer profile from their website but you'll also find full instructions for installing it and how to send your images to them. If you click on view and print size, it will give you an idea of what your panorama will look like when it is printed out. Now we have an idea of what your printed panorama will look like close up. You'll need to find out what its full size is for ordering from the printers. To do this, go to Image and Size. This defaults to centimeters, but as I'm still into English measures, change this to inches. Besides which, many printers like Pro Photo Print still use inches. Before you send it off, it might be a good idea to add a further quarter inch as a white border around your panorama. This will give you the room 
for framing it without losing any of your photo. You just simply go into image and this time choose canvas size to add the extra dimensions you require. Oh, and when you are saving it, the printers do prefer JPEG. Well, I guess that's it. I do hope you've gotten something out of it, if only some inspiration to try it out for yourself. It's certainly been an interesting exercise for me, and who knows, maybe I can persuade the club to introduce a panorama competition in the coming year. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.